Hi, this is Steve with Knee Family Lights. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna cover part two of how to make custom window pixel props. In part one, I showed the physical build and the wiring and how they're attached to my house. In this part, I'll cover the show layout and how the windows are wired to the controller. In addition, I'm gonna show how these windows are modeled in X-Lights and how to submodel them and how to group them. This channel is dedicated to helping you with your light show. So if you find this content useful, hit the like and subscribe buttons. Now let's get right to it. Okay, so here we're taking a look at a screenshot of my layout in X-Lights. And I've got annotated on here two blue boxes. The blue box on the left is a Falcon F16 V3. And if you saw my video on the ammo box build breakdown, that's the same box that I use even today. The small box in the middle there is on top of the roof of the front portico. And that one has a CG1500 box. I also made a video showing the CG1500 box. So if you want to see that video, I've also got that in the description below. The windows on the left side of the house are driven by two outputs on the F16 V3 sitting on the garage. And the windows on the right are driven by one output off of the CG1500 box in that middle controller. So I'm gonna draw on here where the wires go. I have a 20 foot, uh, two 10 foot extension, pre-made cable wire. So things that you can just buy from any pixel vendor. It comes up here and it runs to the input of the first window in the top corner. At the output of those two windows, I ran into issues with chaining props afterwards. So I do have an F amp right here on the output. Put a little blob there showing the F amp. Coming off of that, there is a 20 foot cable that runs all the way back. This is again, two 10 foot sections back to the F16 and it gets power injected. After that power injection, there's a 10 foot wire that goes to the snowflake. And then after that, there's another 10 foot wire that goes to that snowflake. So that covers the the first two windows, which also does chain to those two snowflakes, which is why the F amp was needed. This was done before I switched out the resistor networks on my F16 with 33 ohm resistors. I haven't tried making this run without that F amp now that I've got those 33 ohm resistors. It might work, but since I have the F amp up there kind of pre-set on the end of that window, I just left it alone. The second controller output that comes off the F16 goes to the two windows down here with a single 10 foot extension lead. For that run of pixels in the top left windows, it's a total of 258 pixels if you include the two windows and the two snowflakes. And that data line is running through 60 feet of 10 foot extensions plus one power injection point, and it also includes that one FM. And that's it for powering the windows on the left side. Looking at the right side, there is a single output coming off of a diff receiver that controls all four windows on the right, plus the three snowflakes. This is how it's wired. I've got a 10 foot wire pre-made going to the first window. After that, there's a 10 foot wire leaving from that window to the next window. And similar to the double window on the left side, I had data issues on the lower windows. So I put an F amp here. Again, this was done before I switched out the resistor network to 33 ohms. So it may work now without the F amp, but since I've got it there, I just keep using it. Coming off that F amp, there's a 20 foot lead that comes all the way back to the controller. It gets power injected right here. And then it goes to another 10 foot to the snowflake, another 10 foot run to the snowflake here, one more run to the snowflake there. And then I make another pass back. So this is a 20 foot lead back to the controller. It gets power injected one more time and then another 10 foot lead to this window. And finally, a last 10 foot lead to the last window. So that's a total of 468 pixels off of that one data line on the right side of the house. And that data line is running through 110 feet of extension cables. That's 11 pieces of 10 foot standard extension cables plus the pixel wiring. And that does include one FM. When working with a custom model, I found it easiest to try and draw it out in Excel. These custom windows are straight and they're spaced every three inches, so it's very easy to place uh, these pixel locations in Excel. So here we are looking in Excel, 
This is looking at the front of the model. Don't worry about scale, you just want to get the pixels in order and the numbers in the correct places. And you can also use Excel to predetermine your submodel segments and the pixels that are used in those submodels. As you see here in Excel, I just have a simple table and I'm gonna scroll down here to the middle. So as seen in the first video, my first pixel is on this horizontal run in the middle line. So it goes one, two, three, straight across to 12. It runs down to the bottom, it's pixel 20. It runs straight across to the left, 32. And then up the left side around the perimeter to 48 in the top left corner, straight across the top to pixel 60 in the top right corner, and then back down, ending at pixel 67. It jumps to the bottom middle, so here's 68, and then it runs up, 74. It skips over the middle, and then 75, and ends at 81. Once you have your model created in Excel, you can then determine the width and height that you want for this model as it's going to be in X lights. In this case, it's 37 pixels wide, that would be to this column here, AK, and it's 49 pixels tall. And you can see that here on row 49. So what I've written here on the right is the width is 37 and the height is 39. And you'll see that's, and you'll see why that's important here in a second. For the submodels, I created a border, vertical lines, horizontal lines, and then a bunch of other pieces like a horizontal top, middle, bottom, vertical left, middle, right, the window insides, uh, inside small, and then each of the arms, the top, right, bottom, and left. A couple things I want to note here is, for example, the border. You want this border to start and end in order of the pixels. So you'll see I've got 32 to 67, followed by 12 to 31. So if we take a look at that in the model here. 32 starts here, and if you go up to 67, it'll go up the corner to the top, across to the right, and back down here to the middle. And then the rest of that is from 12 to 31. So 12 is here, and then it will go to 31, which then runs around the outside and finishes back towards that bottom left corner. That order is important. So when you do something like a single strand effect in X-Lights, it's gonna follow that path around. The same thing would be, I'm gonna pick out one example for the vertical middle line that is shown right here, window vertical middle. And this is 26. So node 26 is here at the bottom. And then we need to do 68 to 74. And so you'll see up here, we've got 68 to 74. The next one is pixel six, which is right in the middle. And then 75 to 81 towards the top. And then it finishes with pixel 54. Again, that order is important. So if that's not in order, when you do a single strand effect, it's gonna run straight through that order there and your single strand effect won't quite look right. Most other effects would be fine, but specifically the single strand effect, which does get used quite a bit. So you want these pixel orders for your submodels to be in the right order. These orders do make a difference. So for example, all the horizontals that I've got modeled here go from the left to the right, and all the verticals go from the bottom to the top. So for example, this window vertical right is 20 to 12, decreasing in pixel number, and then also followed by 67 to 60. So if we look at vertical right, it's 20 up to 12, and then 67 to 60. So this window vertical right is following that exact order from bottom to top, 20 to 12, and then 67 to 60. Now let's get this model into X-Lights. Okay, here we are in X-Lights. Here's just a blank show setup. If you go to the layout tab, which is the middle one in the top left corner, you can pick the great custom model, which looks like a little Christmas tree. It's a singing tree. If you move your mouse over, it'll say create new custom. So click that. Drag an area, which will be defining the space that your model is going to be in. And here you can call it window. And then 
in the section below it says model data, click the three ellipses and that'll bring up a pop-up. This is what the pop-up looks like. In the custom model, if you remember, we had a width of 37 and a height of 49. So I'll type those two. This is just a two-dimensional flat model, so depth is one. If you had a, if you have a three-dimensional model, you could add layers, like if it was six layers deep, for example. We'll go back to one. And what you could do now is go into Excel, copy the contents that are in those cells, and then you can come in here, and on the left in the middle, right above where it says background image, there's a cut, there's a copy, and the third one is paste, so I'm gonna click paste here. And what you'll see is all those nodes have now been populated into X lights. Move across, middle down, back to the left. So however you model your windows, you'll be able to just populate them right into here, just like that. And on the left here, you'll see wiring view. So what we're looking at, it, again, is the front. So pixel one is here in the middle, running across, goes all the way around, as I mentioned earlier. If you click the wiring view, this is what you'll see. So this is looking from the back as you wire the pixels from the back. Okay, we'll close up the wiring view and the model data view. And there's your model. I did have to click off to get that model to show up. In this model, once you have your background image of your house, you can scale it to however you'd like it to look. So I'll just kind of set it like that. Move it over here towards the side, make it a little bit bigger, actually make it a little smaller. And if let's just say you have two or three of these, you could just copy and paste to make more. But before we do that, let's go ahead and make the submodels. Scroll down here to the submodel area, hit the ellipses there, and you can start adding submodels. So I'm gonna add border, or call it outline, and copy and paste the pixels from Excel that you had pre-figured out, paste it in, and you'll see the border is now highlighted. Then you can add another one, and you can go through one at a time and keep adding submodels until you've completed all your submodels. When you're done, hit OK. And at this point, if you want, you can copy your model, click off, and hit paste, and now you have two windows. So for the side-by-side -side windows, this is how the double windows are done. Then the lower windows, if you paste it again, move it down, and paste for a fourth window, and then move that down. Now let's go back to my show and I'll show you some of the groupings that I've done now that you've made these windows. Once you have all your windows created, submodeled, duplicated, and placed on your home, you'll want to group various submodels for ease of sequencing, which will give you a lot of different options for how to use these windows. So what I'm doing here is showing a number of screenshots of the groupings that I have in my show. The pixels that are shown in yellow on the right preview pane are what's in the group. I've got an all windows group, windows outlines, windows insides. The insides are nice to use for one set of effects while doing a different set of effects on the outline borders. Here's another group of window insides small, so it's kind of like a small spinner. It doesn't use the whole set of inside pixels horizontals on the bottom, in the middle, in the top, and then for verticals, verticals of the left, verticals in the middle, and verticals on the right. And I've also created groupings for windows in the lower level and windows on the upper level. With the submodels and grouping of submodels, here's a few samples of these windows in action.
that just about wraps up this part two of how to make custom window pixel props. We covered how they were connected from the controllers to the windows, and we also covered how they were modeled in X-Lights. Hopefully you found something useful so you can make your own custom window props. If there's something you'd like to know about my show, please let me know in the comments below. Until next time, we'll see ya. Thank you.